have achieved. Um, so what is the connection between a certain number of randomly generated patterns applied and the coverage achieved? Now, if you will uh, make a plot of uh, coverage versus the number of vectors, and that is actually also true, even if testing is not random, you will see a plot like this. Here you have vectors. And here you have coverage. which of course goes between 0 to 1. And typically, it will go like this. It will assign totally approach 1. If it is pseudo-random testing, then with the pseudo-random testing, if you have, a, if you come to the point where you have applied all exhaustive uh, vectors, then your coverage is going to be 1. Uh, in actual practice, that is uh, never feasible, because that exhaustive testing would require you to use an enormously large number of vectors. So you will probably stop somewhere here. But one question is, is there a description of this curve? So can we say, uh, for example, is, let us say, co coverage as a function of length, do you think it could be something like this? Where E is some parameter. Do you think it looks like an exponential? Uh, I worked on this problem uh, a while ago and uh, spent a lot of time trying to fit coverage curves with uh, an explanation, and it turns out that if you will fit this part of the curve, it is not going to fit here. So there is uh, uh, no way of making this fit. And then I uh, thought uh, more uh, about this, and we realized that uh, there is more going on than uh, what this can represent, and we came to the idea of uh, what we call the detectability profile. But uh, some researchers at uh, Stanford, who were also working on uh, random testing, they uh, came across our uh, paper, and then they started using the idea of detectability profile. And after that, many other researchers have used it. And uh, I think you, might, you will find this an interesting idea. And basic idea is this. In any circuit, there are some faults that are easy to test. And then there are some faults that are hard to test. And the overall coverage that you get is a combination of the effect of easy to test faults as well as hard to test faults. And that is why, if you look at the behavior here, so here you can expect that here the faults that are getting detected, they are the faults which are easier to test. The faults that are getting uh, tested here, those are the faults which are harder to test. And that is why the behavior seems to uh, be different. And so we decided, okay, take a look at all the faults and divide the fall into uh, what we call detectability profile. And the profile is a vector. It is given by
where n is the total number of uh, possible vectors and each sub k is the number of faults detected by exactly k vectors. And let us assume that the total number of faults is equal to m and obviously m is going to be equal to summation of the elements of the detectability profile uh, i equal to 1 to m. So basically take all the faults, uh, partition the faults according to how testable they are. So notice that uh, this here is the number of faults that are uh, detected by only a single vector. So this is the number of faults detected by a single vector, H1. In other words, H1 is the number of faults that are least testable. Right? Because there's only one out of an uh, n test that we detect. On the other hand, this is the number of faults that are highly detectable. Highly detectable. So basically our idea is that um, separate the fault into these classes. So most testable faults, the least testable faults, and so on. So in a, if in a certain unit, if you have a large number of faults which are uh, which have low testability then your profile is going to be skewed to this side and the unit is going to be harder to test. On the other hand, if you have a lot of faults on this end, that means in that unit, most of the faults are easily testable. Okay, so now let us, uh, oh, let me uh, uh, define the term detectability. Detectability of a fault is equal to K by N, where K is the number of vectors that uh, detect a fault. And then we decided to uh, compile this profile for a number of combinational circuits. And uh, so here, let me give you a couple of them. So here is a circuit called a full header. Now these are transistor level faults. And you have uh, four inputs. Inputs four and hence M is 16. And there are N is 16 and m which is total number of faults happens to be a 90 
And we found that the detectability profile is one detectability profile is H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, H8, and equal to 1, 11, 2, 43. 1, In other words, there is one fault which is detectable by only a single specific vector. So this is the one that is hardest to test. And there are 11 faults which are detected by exactly two vectors and so on. And here's another, this is an example. And another example we took was the Schneider's counter example. Remember Schneider's counter example? That uh, we had used for showing that uh, single path propagation may fail. That's why it's called a counter example. And you might also remember the fact that Schneider's counter example circuit is rather ugly looking. And because it is ugly, so it is actually a, a, a good example of a bad circuit in terms of testability. So there, it is, has uh, four inputs, and hence M is equal to 16. And M happens to be 44. And H given by H1, H2, H3, H14 is 23, 19, 1, 1. Okay, see how ugly it is. So if you want to see it uh, graphically, here it is. So you have 16, so n equal to. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and here is 16. And notice that H1 is a 23, so here is 23, so this is your H1, and H2 is 19, and H3 is 1, and H14, which is here, 1. So notice, most of the faults in the Schneider example are very hard to test, right? So th these are the hard to test faults. And of course on this side, they are easy. So there's only one fault which is uh, easy to test, but uh, all the faults, are on the bad side, which is hard to test side. So, and then we came, uh, we have derived an expression for coverage, and I'm going to uh, give you that expression uh, next time. And I will uh, give you a, um, now we have derived our uh, expression for assuming random testing. And then Professor McCluskey, uh, at Stanford University, he and his students, they uh, derived an expression for pseudo-random testing. So they consider pseudo-random testing, and they uh, obtained an expression for that. And But there are some uh, uh, very interesting uh, implications of detectability profile for both hardware and software testing. In fact, a lot of times people, for example, in software testing, they assume that all the faults are equally testable, which is actually a really bad assumption. Because testability can, uh, uh, so if you have a thousand different vectors, so there are some faults which may be tested by all thousand, and there are some faults which may be tested by only one. So the testability, which uh, I have uh, here, it can uh, vary by several orders of magnitude. So faults really are very different. So we'll continue next time and we'll uh, see.